Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. Today we're going to be going over some big mistakes that Farrah players are making and to help us with that is Fariha, who has named herself after the hero basically. And she'll be going over some of the more common mistakes that people keep making that you should really reevaluate. You can check out all of her stuff in the description below, but let's get started. So as introductions, who are you and why should people listen to you when it comes to big fire mistakes that people seem to make? Hey guys, I'm Fariha and I am a GM fire main with nearly a thousand hours on her, peaked rank one fire on overbuff. And straight away, what do you think is one of the more common mistakes with playing fire that you want to start off with? Okay, so the biggest mistake I see in beginner Faras is that they tend to fall out of the sky a lot and run out of fuel when they need it the most, they'll fall off maps and die to all sorts of dumb things that they shouldn't die to, and it's all to do with their hover mechanics, because they'll either hold down spacebar for way too long, or they're gonna tap the fuel bar way too quickly, and you kind of have to find a good balance between the two. So how do you avoid falling out of the air as much as some people do? The basics are to tap hover at about this speed, and as soon as you hit the red zone with fuel, Use your jump jet, let go of hover, and it should recharge to full by the time you reach the peak of your boost. But a key thing to note here, if you don't get that elevation with jump jet, or immediately drop out of the sky after using it, your overall elevation is definitely going to be lessened. Hover tapping at the right speed is one part of this, but making sure you get full height from jump jet is even more important. If you're already close to the skybox of a map, aka just the top of it, drop down a little so your jump jet doesn't get cut short, because that will really mess up your fuel cycle. That's the reason why on maps like Anubis Point B, where the skybox is really low, a lot of Faras will feel like they can't get high up enough and they feel like they're always on the ground. That's exactly why. And I assume that's going to take a lot of practice to get right and hit your targets as well. Yeah, there's a bit of adjustment time to be able to do it without thinking, and even more so to master it. But the more you play her, the more it'll become second nature, just like any other skill. Don't worry too much about it. Speaking of keeping yourself in the air, rocket jumping, you've actually highlighted as being somewhat of a mistake that people make. Why is that? Oh, this is gonna be controversial. <laughs> well, I know a lot of you guys have seen this in the OWL, and you see this in certain streams and, uh, and stuff like that, but IMO, it's a big mistake. Okay, you're probably thinking, Fariha, the pros must do it, it must be good. Well, let me tell you why it isn't. Because there is nowhere that you can get with rocket jumping that you can't get with just good hover mechanics. It's that simple. The normal hover and jump jet cycle actually gains you elevation too, and when you do that right, you can reach the skybox in one or two rotations for most maps. And the thing is with rocket jumping, as of right now, she still takes self damage. And the way Farah is at the moment, it's not really a thing that you want to impose on yourself. Healing these days is rare. Healing is very very rare for a fire, and every bit of damage you take is just gonna make it easier for the enemy to kill you. I mean, even if you're going up against another fire in a mirror pharmacy duo, and you rocket jump at the start, your mercy is gonna take a while to heal that back up, and if the other fire gets a quick direct on you, it means that she can two-tap you even through mercy's healing, even though it would normally take three consecutive shots to kill a fire through a mercy pocket. So in general, there's just very little reason to rocket jump, even with the new Farah changes, because it seems that some people said that you can actually get a bit more hype with her now. Well, it's one thing versus another, isn't it? Getting there with rocket jump means that you have to sacrifice your health pool in order to save yourself, what, half a second. And even if your healers heal it back up, they won't even get ult charge because it's self damage, so it wastes their time too. Whereas if you do it with hover, you use a cooldown that immediately replenishes itself, you lose no health, and you get there just the same. Not that much slower. And I guess speaking of movement mistakes and abilities, we'll go over the final one, the concussive shot. What kind of mistakes do you see around that ability in general? With concussive blast, I see two major mistakes, and one would be to underuse it, you know, not using it enough, and two, when they do use it, they kind of have no goal for it, so they kind of just end up wasting it. They, um, 
They'll sometimes shoot conks straight into the enemy team, but it does nothing because they had no plan for it, or they just use it on themselves in the weirdest of times, and it wastes that really, really key cooldown. So when it comes to using it more, how should it be used more? Like, I see a lot of Furrows using it as just purely movement, diving onto targets, some trying to get some environmental kills. What are really solid ways to use this ability to your advantage? It is a super versatile tool and it is her most important cooldown and for a reason. It is a bit situational though, so say there are enemies by a pit, maybe Lijian Gardens. Of course, save it for the boop if you do get that chance. Now if they're set up on high ground for instance, maybe that classic defense on Anubis point A, send it behind them, behind their shields, onto a bit of their environment, onto a pillar to just knock some of them off and disturb their setup a little bit. Now, if it's a lone target, say a lone McCree on a castle in Eichenwald, use your conk as you shoot a rocket and it'll end up moving him in a predictable direction so you can get that second rocket off on him really quickly before he can really react or adjust. Otherwise, when using it on yourself, use it to engage in attack or to specifically get away from danger. I know a lot of fire players just kind of spend it in the middle of nowhere and kind of doing nothing with it and it takes away that really key bit of her survivability and they end up dying in situations where they could have absolutely survived. One of Farah's biggest ailments is anybody that has pretty good aim, any form of like Widowmaker, hit scan, that kind of general area, or even a D.Va uh, up from distance. What kind of mistakes do you feel need highlighting when it comes to fighting your counters, basically? Well, Fire's main weakness is that she's very squishy. You know, she's got the massive hitbox, she, um, her entire, her entire set of movement is slower than most of the other, you know, flanker style DPS heroes. And even like, even compared to Tracer, because she at least, she's tiny and she has much better burst mobility. With Farah, people make a big mistake of approaching hitscans and their counters head on. And while this is more acceptable in the lower ranks, because hitscans don't hit all their shots, don't hit a lot of their shots, you're going to have this false sense of security. And it's something that you're going to get away with much and much less as you rank up. Even when you're diving into them from afar, if they can already see you and they're already shooting at you, you're going to be dead or at least very weak before you can even get close enough to do any reliable damage to them. So what's the best way, if you were to use an example of a map, to get around Hitscan and really get the surprise on them? King's Row is a good one. Okay, say you're defending and say the enemies got a Widowmaker, which, well, there's always a Widowmaker in my games. It's pretty much every game for me. And what I like to do in this case is to rotate around Hotel when her team pushes in. This way, she's not looking at me and neither is her team. And most importantly, she doesn't have direct line of sight of me when I'm approaching. So when I'm behind her entire team, there's no pressure on me. But as soon as I get that first rocket on her, there's a lot of pressure on her and she's going to start to panic because suddenly half her health's gone. She just made that gasping sound and she'll look for a grapple or, I don't know, scream for heals, but it'll be too late because that second rocket's already there and bam, she's dead. You have to realize that players in this game have blind spots and especially on attack, they're very tunneled in on your team and your frontline so if you can find angles of approach or even just stay with your team until you can get close enough to attack, save your cooldowns until you really need them, then you're much, much more likely to get the pick off. And finally, even though we haven't really ordered this, what is the ultimate Farah mistake that you see people making? Funnily enough, it's around her ultimate, right? Yep, that's for sure. I see a lot of players holding on to Alps forever and ever and ever and they don't realize how strong of a tool it is. I think they're just afraid to go back into spawn. I think that's what that is. And they hold on to Barrage for ages, not realizing that while it makes her vulnerable, it's quite literally the highest DPS ultimate in the entire game. It does 4,800 damage over the course of just four seconds, and no other ultimate can match that. 
There's a ton of killing potential with it, even if you're just going for one target. So even just using the ultimate to trade effectively, you dying but also taking out one target, is enough in most cases, would you say? Absolutely. I mean, with how strong it is, if you're alting a single person, that poor sap is going back to spawn. And if you're positioned in a way where you catch someone out on a flank or just catch someone alone, don't hesitate to solo out them. I mean, first of all, you're likely not going to die if you pick the right target, and second of all, you're going to charge up another barrage really quickly, and it's better to use your ult faster so you can charge up another one faster instead of just hanging on to a single ultimate for the whole game. Pick potential in Overwatch is so important, and the ability to secure that one kill for your team is going to heavily swing the favor towards you guys in a team fight. And finally, just before we sort of finish, are there any of us sort of minor changes or minor mistakes that you wanted to highlight? Because we've gone over quite a lot here. One last small mistake I notice sometimes is when going up against a D.Va and her mech is destroyed, many players wait until she jumps out to start shooting at her, and you don't actually have to do that. It makes the shot just a little bit harder to hit when it's just baby D.Va. And what you can do instead is shoot the mech right as she's about to jump out. So when her mech starts to get destroyed, she stands still. When that animation starts, just a second afterwards if you hit it, the full splash damage will affect baby D.Va and she'll already be really low. She'll be really easy to kill. And finally, where can people see you definitely not making any of these mistakes yourself? Uh, where can people see more Fire gameplay, both on competitive and, of course, the PTR? You can catch me at twitch.tv slash Fariha, and I've also got a YouTube channel with a bunch of educational stuff on there, so you'll see a lot of GM Fire gameplay and some PTR stuff as well. So I stream five, six days a week, so feel free to stop on by. It'll be lots of fun. And that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching, do check out all the free his stuff in the description below, hopefully you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe if you did, and until next time take care, we'll see you then.